Hey folks, man, this is Monk, and we are back. And I'm joined as always with my calls. We got Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah folks. Today, we got a heavy hitter, man. We're going to be talking about Friday the 13th from 1980. And this film is directed by Sean S. Cunningham. Um, it came out in May 9th of uh, 1980, so it's a summertime film. And our star, uh, we've got uh, Betsy Palmer, we've got Kevin Bacon, we've got Adrian King, um, Robbie Morgan, Giannine Taylor, Lori Bertram, Bartram, Bartram. I think she's been in a few of these horror type films. Um, Harry Crosby, uh, Walt Gorney, Mark Nelson, and more folks, man. Everyone else just seems like just fodder. You know, they're minor characters. <laughs> they gave Ari Lehman a, a cast credit. He's he's little Jason. <laughs> it's like, dude, we oh, see the him. Little, the we, little guy. We see him for like two, two and a half seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so the plot of this is uh, Crystal Lake's history of murder doesn't deter counselors from setting up a summer camp in the woodsy area. Superstitious locals who warn against it, but the fresh-faced young people pay little heed to the old timers then they find themselves stalked by a brutal killer as they're slashed shot and stabbed the counselors struggle to stay alive against a merciless opponent point when it comes to the slasher genre you know what i'm saying like we we we, we got the, the the way that this was filmed this is th that's what really elevates this film gives it that sense of realism is that that pov through the eyes of the killer view that we get throughout this whole film mm -hmm. uh, we first saw that in 1974's black christmas it opens up with you know the pov shot and then we get it uh, a few years later in carpenter's halloween in 78 so of course why not 1980 if it ain't broke don't fix it mm -hmm. you know what i mean and like you said they they actually they take it and they really really dig into um what made those two films notable respectable in the slash slasher franchise and then created it their own lane with, mm -hmm. with the way that they did it in this film i mean like you you see the, these these people getting stalked and it, it works man from the opening shot you know when we meet our first two characters we were flashing back to to 1958 so essentially what happens in this film um our stalker killer is the parent of one of the children you know in 50 in in um um, you know, in the previous time, so in 19, I think 57, they lost their kid, their kid drowned at this camp. And um, and the killer blames the, the counselors for not paying yeah. attention. So when this film opens up, we see them actually stalking two counselors a year after that that tragedy happened to their right. kid. And we get that POV, man, and, and, and it's great, man. It just puts us all into the stalker's point of view, man. And, and it's crazy because our the, the people that they're stalking, they're just living their life, man. They're yeah. just doing what, what they do, well, having fun. And the, the thing that really works, too, is it is this, this element of surprise because you don't know who the stalker is yeah. you don't know what's motivating them why they're so upset why they're 86 you, you know and what all gets these me people. about this film too there's at least two or, or three times when they see the stalker and like and especially in the first when we seen him and, and they're like oh we're sorry man we're just fooling around right yeah. like it's someone that's known to them it's it, or someone that, that they don't feel threatened by exactly you know? exactly they, that's a crazy it's part. almost like 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 they were fooling around it's almost like getting caught by your parents like yeah. oh we weren't doing nothing. Yeah, put your shirt back on, girl. Your parents put a knife in your gut. Like, yeah. <laughs> like instead of giving you cookies, they give you a knife. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, give you this shiv yeah, real yeah. quick. So, so, so they definitely do a good job with that atmospherics mm -hmm. and um, and I and I think um, you know, we were speaking about this earlier. They stole um, a, a, a one um. I guess it's a tool in in, in, the, in the arsenal for a film like this with the sound with um from Jaws. Jaws had a theme. Oh, this so, is the Jaws effect so, all day. So, so our killer has a theme here, you know. And I think um, you know, it, it is a kind of a um, you know, inspired by Halloween. But I think in this one they use that theme to a different effect, you know, more consistently than was used in Halloween. You know. Well, you know, the, the, I think what they did with the music in this in in this particular movie is they were able to separate it they give you the ch -ch -ch -ah -ah. Mm -hmm. that that is specifically for jason they mm -hmm. they they built the 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 lore of this character that might not even exist yet you know what i'm saying yeah. but we know when we hear that that jason's coming but the the other thing that i really liked about this film is they only play music when slasher things are happening mm -hmm. when the slasher is slashing or stalking or you know has the intentions to do such other than that we just get 
you know, just it's just story plot talking teenagers doing teenager shit, uh, camp counselor, whatever, you know, just just messing around. There's no music mm -hmm. except for when bad things are happening, but they don't. You know, there's no mixing on the plate. You know what I'm saying? Like when when we actually do get, you know, our our villain exposed, they're not hitting the ch -ch -ha -ha no more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because that's not for them. That was actually that is 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 to be deemed for somebody else. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think it was really really cool how they gave us that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. It's interesting, man. It follows beats that I think get repeated a lot in other films. Just even as far as the the people in the town warning our characters to stay away from there, don't go there, don't do that. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I think that's cool here, man. Uh, I love my guy that um, that gives our um, our essentially our first um, new victim. Um, a ride to the place, man, because oh, yeah. he's, 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 he's doing everything that we would, that characters later on in other films would, would grow to do. The warning, the, oh, you don't know anything, but I'm still dropping you off. Like, I feel like if, if you was really about that life, we like, keep I'm not riding you there. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I'll take you anywhere over there. Like, yeah. you're going to die if you go exactly. there. Like, <laughs> Let me tell you about these, all these bad things that happened on, uh, you know, now get out. <laughs> But then it's just like, all right, good luck. Yeah, more, man. More power to you. That's a trip. But hey, uh, real quick, can we have a small moon in the silence for the one cast member that did lose their life in this film? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. They're, they're, they're. So, speaking on wow. the snake in the cabin, okay? Mm -hmm. This was a real snake. There was no no PETA or uh, whoever, with the, the animal rights groups mm -hmm. none of that was was present on the scene and our special uh makeup special effects guy tom savini uh well known very good at what he <laughs> does um him and director sean cunningham were actually staying on the campsite which was uh was in, uh, in new jersey noby bosco camp mm. noby bosco boy scout camp <laughs> um the rest of the cast members were uh were staying in uh in hotels and such but tom savini actually had a snake experience in his cabin and then this was not in the script he just decided it'd be a good idea hey man let's just let's throw a snake in the cabin and they actually chopped the snake up Sad. with a machete yeah. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so that's that's not cool yeah, cause, cause that, i mean <laughs> that, that's part of the the plot whereas you know um some guy he's got his he's an investor so he invests his money in reopening crystal lake where all this crazy stuff happened yes. and so the counselors are there they're helping fix the place up for their um load of before the kids come in you know mm -hmm. getting ready and, and there's a snake in this woman's room and, and when i saw that scene it hit me i was like yo they really killed they the really snake. they really like, chopped they it chopped this, they like, really chopped so it and then up. how do you get away with that like the, the, you can't I, get away with that now dude. no no I not just, at all i just saw a story actually um yesterday that they're mad at um Michael Bay for um, a pigeon getting killed on that Netflix movie. He, he what, hit it with a drone. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> but they're mad. They coming after him. Yeah. Said he killed a pigeon in France or something. I mean, but, but then again, I mean, you got to factor in. Okay, we got in in, in Friday the Thirteenth. We got a snake getting chopped up. I mean, mm -hmm. then you in the same year you had a Cannibal Holocaust where they, they obliterated Man, a tortoise. They killed a lot of stuff I mean, in the Holocaust. Know, so, they killed like a tortoise. There was a little rat looking thing. Yeah, and I'm it. and I'm not I'm Man, not. Hey, I love animals. animals. I'm not, I'm not trying to be, de uh, you know, non-sensitive to the animals. Like, so, you know, the yeah, snake, you know what I'm saying? It stood out to me because I was did. feeling sensitive. I was like, that snake. And what I didn't like is how, you know, in the movie, you see after the dude chopped him, he like stares at the snake. I'm like, man, you really you really just did that and you feel good about it? Gross. Yeah, that is. But, yeah, that was crazy. But, but that, you know, speaking, speaking on, uh, on the effects in this film, this is a prime example of where less is more because we're, we're we're not it's not like a saw flick this is this is an 80s film so we don't need to see somebody get their stomach slashed and then all the intestines mm -hmm. and, and and what have you's falling out you know you, you get probably have budget limitations and limitations of effects at the time well, even though tom savini was was a legend i think showing some of it in real time is going to be well, tougher than just showing the aftermath. Of absolutely, stuff, and, and and this is it. You know, we we got our glimpses. There, there, we did see a, a throat slash. We did see a you know uh, the arrow come through Kevin Bacon's throat and stuff. But ultimately, it's the insinuation that works. Mm -hmm. We can see somebody with the their hand up with the knife, mm -hmm. and know that the the target is going to get stabbed. We don't need to see it every single time because I mean. When you think of, of the Jason franchise as a whole, it has a very high body count. We don't need to see 
everybody hit the ground. You know what Later I mean? Later on they would, though. Oh, they do. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, shit, Jason's getting to the point where he's like, oh, you in a sleeping bag? Let me bang this thing on the tree real quick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, they, Yo, they, yeah. they, get, they get with it. But, but speaking uh, on the budget, too, I mean, dude, this film, uh, it had a $550,000 budget, right? This is crazy. In the States, pulled back 40 mil. Worldwide, pulled back 60 mil. They probably made another two hundred million on VHS and and you know Dude, <laughs> like like I don't know why they, they don't put those numbers out. Like, they made enough. We still don't get those numbers, you know. Like that's crazy. They made enough that they were able to successfully drop a Friday the Thirteenth every year of the eighties except mm-hmm. for eighty three. Mm-hmm. That's when they had to take a smoke break, <laughs> and then they came back and got with it. It's probably like some type of strike going on in Hollywood or something. Yeah, or. I mean, dude, it's like man in the eighties. Every day was Friday the 13th. That's what makes this one of the most notable slasher franchises mm-hmm. is because, you know, and it's the, this consistent growth in in the first one. I mean, they don't even talk about Jason until the yeah. back end. So so that's another thing I want to mention, man. Um, You know, it's a spoiler. You know, we, we watch discussing this. The, who the vet killer eventually become, we find out is. And, and I think that was a great flip on, on this, man, because this is before Sleepaway Camp had yes. that weird twist. Um, but 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 essentially, it's it's Jason's mom. Jason yes. is the kid who was drowned, and his mom is a killer in this film. And I thought that was a great touch to make a woman the killer of all these people. Because you're probably thinking of some dude, or, or or we don't even know what you know at this point. We just know that a killer is out there. And um and then we do get that moment later on in the film where um she's with the last victim and actually takes a coffee break, which I thought was real interesting, man. Like everyone else is just getting stalked and slashed. But she takes the time to, to talk to, to um, I forgot her name. Um, oh, this was, I want to say it's Alice. Alice. Talk to Alice and and, 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 and telling her, you know, talking about her son and the experience. But you still she, know she's going to kill her. She like, wanted she crazy. wanted to savor the moment. She was that's like, hey, man, you know, at, at first you go to Camp Crystal Lake. It's a buffet. You have mm-hmm. you have, uh, you know, all kinds of, of, of counselors that you can kill. Now she's mm-hmm. she's she's running low on material. So she's like, oh, man, I got to I got to make gotta this, one. this one. Yeah, up. man. Instead of <laughs> instead of searing this steak, let's cook it in a slow cooker like a pot roast. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But and that, that's the that's the really cool thing, too, is because when you first see and um, Mama Voorhees, uh, Pamela Voorhees is played by Betsy Palmer. And when you first see her, she's she's all the way murder she wrote to me. I I, I look at that, I'm like, man, you got the the the, the light blue sweater, you know, that, that uh Carolina blue thing going on. And she seems you can look in her eyes and see something's off, but with the words that she's saying, how she's delivering, she almost seems nurturing. She's a mom. She's a mom. But then she just she flicks the switch mm-hmm. and dude, she embodies crazy so well. Like when she starts like she you're looking at her and she starts talking as Jason. She's like, mm-hmm. kill her, mommy, kill her. She's like, I will. It's good. <laughs> and, and she just like keeps flicking back and, and forth. It's like, it's like what? It was, and, and, I, and, and it wasn't good enough to kill those immediate counselors. <laughs> Excuse me. So now she has this vendetta against anyone. Like, all counselors period. are bad. Even the people that haven't done anything to her kid at all, just to catch them. Jason like, died in 58. Yeah. Those counselors were responsible. Even the, these people are this, responsible as this, far as I know. They haven't this, done anything yet. There's no kids These, these counselors, they ain't even no kids. Yeah. And, she, and, and if you notice when, like, it's her verbiage, dude, she's like, you killed my son. Mm-hmm. You let him drown. She's like, man, man, all I did was, was paint yeah. the, paint the damn cabin. What are you talking yeah. about? I just got here. <laughs> I don't know your son. Know who your son is, yeah, but it's great because it tells us how traumatized and warped that has left her. You know, yes. I think that's cool, man. And it's it's awesome because it it really, like I said, it creates the lore of this this villain in this franchise. Where as at first, you know, in essence, you know, Mama Voorhees is the killer. She's possessed by the spirit of her son. Mm-hmm. Where then, as we move down the line with the the other the other films that came out it's then jason this this figment you know this this kind of supernatural killer that is possessed by the spirit of his mother Mm -hmm. so it's it's really cool how they and that's how like i don't think that they intended to drop 12 jason films when they made this first one Mm -mm. you know what i mean but (laughs) <laughs> they, because this 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 plot and this premise, this story is just so simplistic and has so much wiggle room. 
there was a lot of open-ended avenues that you could take mm -hmm. to then create this other character and still make it make sense. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? For 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 what this franchise brings. It's not like, you know, like in Halloween, you're you're kind of still in a box. Yeah. It has to be Michael Myers and it has to be okay. Well, first he's a human, then he's a human that's possessed by, you know, the devil and then he's not a human at all and other you know, nah. Uh, okay, it, it works for Halloween. That wouldn't work for this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. they, they, th that is why this is such a revered franchise is because it created its own lane in an oversaturated market anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. It's nuts, man. Um, but, but yeah, th that, that, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a simple story, man. Um, um, the ending also is um, pretty cool, man. We get the um, knockdown drag out fight with... Uh, Mama Voorhees, man, yes. and I don't think Mama Voorhees gets enough credit in the ranking of um, movie slasher killers. Yes. I mean, we got Freddy, everybody know Jason, everybody uh, Michael Myers, and you know, and some of these others, but nobody brings up Mama Voorhees, and she was one of the first and one of the, one of the best. She's man. OG. Yeah, she's man. got uh, the she personality with it and, and, and everything. I think also maybe the nature of this film, because we don't see her until that last um, you know, minute, whereas, whereas um, the other killers, they're there the whole time. We see them, but that's you what know. makes this film great is the third mm -hmm. phase. You know what I'm saying? You get you get 65% build up and then you just get yeah. Mama Voorhees. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And 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 also, you know, I also like that you know the 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 dude who wrote the who wrote this um uh, what's his name? Uh Victor Miller. I'm I'm a firm believer this is just my personal opinion, but I think he's a Stephen King fan because mm -hmm. uh you know we get a scene where you know Mama Voorhees is beating down the door, and then <laughs> it looks it looks like here's Johnny from mm -hmm. The Shining, and then it's the jump scare at the end for me that like you know when, yeah. when she's just Alice is just rowing away quietly in the boat like yeah, that's, you, that's I don't know why part. you still feel safe so so, so you know <laughs> so that's what I'm saying we got the the, the fight like her her and Mom Voorhees fight and Mom Voorhees got that old woman strength we we hear the old man strength all the time but she got that old woman Mama Bear dude. And you got you got a fact that she was dragging bodies all over the place yeah. the whole film. She's yeah. strong. She's strong. She probably like she eats um, her wheaties. She like uh, misery. Um, um, strong. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> Kathy Bait. Yeah. <laughs> but, but then, but then, you know, and finally, um, with, this is probably the best effect in this thing, man. When when um, um, Alice grabs a machete and chops her head off. And, oh, she swing that saying? thing like Jose Canseco. It was wild to see, man. I feel like this is also the horror er of this era was a inspired a lot by those italian giallo type films yes. you know mm -hmm. where, where just craziness was happening um but, but it's cool but then you know she wakes up in the hospital um no 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 she's in a boat jumps in the boat and rolls out to the middle of the lake for whatever reason i mean if you don't kill the mama why you gotta roll away go back to the end of town yeah because yeah the, the killer's done yeah <laughs> it's not like the, it's not like the zombie apocalypse where they're like oh no the, the zombies are on <laughs> land let me get out here in this yeah. water so i love that part <laughs> and then she's wake the next morning she wakes up and she's still on the boat oh and the nice music up. and it's all hazy yeah, she's like oh sudden, ugh, i made it all of a sudden we get a little jason <laughs> rah, yep. grabs her pulls her in and then she wakes up at hospital and they're like you all right ma'am she's screaming he's like oh did you get the little boy he's like what little boy yeah. which is wild to me because how would he be if he drowned so that brings a, a supernatural element into the whole thing man it, it's nutty and man. that's what makes it work <laughs> for the sequels mm -hmm. because yeah. instantly she's like oh well then he's still out there man unless he got gills He's not living for 30 years <laughs> in the water, okay? But he's still out there. So but he's so, still out there. So, so. You got to suspend your disbelief and just know that, that, that there's a zombie a little kid out there but waiting. See, and, 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 that's, and that's, that. like I said, that's what works for this franchise. Because see, in Mama Voorhees, that was the physical form mm -hmm. the, of, 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 of the killer. But then now we have the supernatural form in Jason. And, you know, they, they, they created a legend. And mm -hmm. it, it just, just with with that ending and that's why moving into the, the the sequel which we will do that and i'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this but that's why the first 10 10 15 minutes of the sequel is the last 10 15 minutes 
of the original. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, talk about budget restrictions. Yeah. I think that one might have something to do with it. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Yeah, but, but I think we can wrap this up, mm-hmm. man. Check this thing out if you haven't seen it. If you've seen it, rewatch it, man, because I think this was the first time I've actually seen it in its entirety. And I remember... Yeah. Just seeing parts of it, I think I'm more familiar with the later films in the franchise. But yeah. but, but seeing it for the first time, it's it's not a bad film, man. For what it is, you know what I'm saying. Maybe some of the sequels got a little wild with it, but yes. But it's still solid, man. And it's definitely if you're in the slashers, you can see where the blueprint kind of comes from. You know, watching this. Absolutely, I I, I I'm with you 100. percent This was just as fun for me watching this time around as it was every other time to the first time i've seen it and then thinking you know thinking of the franchise you know jason don't really talk much this is the only time you're ever gonna see in a friday the 13th film someone get slapped someone get talked to before they get killed and see the killer drive so be (laughs) part of the magic jason just he he walks you down and then takes you out that's and he don't even he don't say please or thank you yeah folks man so we'll wrap this up man uh make sure you follow us at classics of cinematics on instagram this is monk you catch me at monkey blood on twitter instagram and follow from the canopy network at ftc net on instagram and it's bobby blockbuster you can catch me on instagram at bobby blockbuster 118 yeah we out of here folks peace